What's up internet? It's your soul. And this is a follow up to my recent video about World Trade Center 7. Uh, there was recently a new study published out of the Alaska Fairbanks University. The results of four years worth of academic study apparently into the mathematical and physical details of the collapse of World Trade Center Building 7 at the time of 9-11 in New York. And ultimately they concluded that the government's NIST report, which was produced at the time, shortly after the events, to actually explain the collapse of World Trade Center 7, basically couldn't be right. They're completely wrong due to a long list of reasons. We don't have all the data on that. I'm not a structural engineer. I'm not even going to attempt to try to prove or disprove that uh, myself. Obviously, four years and a highly funded study is required to do that kind of thing, not me just sitting here without the qualifications to do that. But when I covered this a few days ago, a few people pointed out, well, do we really need to have this study done because there's so much other evidence surrounding World Trade Center 7? And I've been looking through some of it again, and you know, there's been debates and arguments raging on about this for literally years and years and years and years. Many people have given up at this point after a decade worth of arguing online. Uh, but, you know, with fresh eyes, I look back at some of this stuff and I'm a bit more critical than I was perhaps when I first started looking at this. And I've heard some of the counter arguments to some of the evidence that people have put forward to say that World Trade Center 7 was demolished through demolitions and that kind of thing. You know, I look at things from all angles as best I can. I'm going to show you a couple of short videos here along these lines, which I think make some interesting points. Namely, firstly, people have said that the claims that no high-rise steel building had collapsed prior to this building's collapse due to fires was false, and actually they point to these other buildings. However, having looked into that myself, I think it's fair to say that actually, at least the ones I've seen so far that have been put forward as examples of buildings that have collapsed as a result of fire, uh, weren't comparable. They weren't tall buildings, and they're all generally always there's a difference between the details of World Trade Center 7 and those buildings that makes them not really a valid comparison. But I just want to make the point here that even NIST, the people tasked by the government to look into this, actually said, this is a first. And, you know, this has never happened before in the whole history of construction. We've never seen this kind of collapse before. And even at the end, they said, so we, we're putting forward recommendations that safety standards are checked and strengthened because obviously this is a problem. This is interesting because I've not heard this from this before. Even though this video is quite old, I hadn't seen it before. And one of the arguments put forward by people sometimes is that, well, you know, if if this fire if this building really did come down as a result of fire, why haven't we seen an emergency reassessment of safety standards and so on? Well, they claim in this video that that's what they're recommending, but I mean, I, obviously, I'm not in the building industry, but I haven't ever heard of that actually having taken place and drastic changes having been made. Certainly there's not been any publicised re-strengthening of existing steel structures and we haven't had any steel structures as far as I know coming down like this as a result of fire since then either. But let's just watch through this video, it's only short. New York City, 2001. No tall building had ever collapsed primarily due to fire. But that's exactly what investigators believe happened to the 47-story World Trade Center Building 7 on September 11th. According to a three-year comprehensive building and fire safety investigation just completed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. World Trade Center 7 collapsed because of fires. We really have a new kind of progressive collapse that we have discovered here, which is a fire-induced progressive collapse. In fact, we've shown for the first time that fire can induce a progressive collapse. So just to reiterate, he's literally claiming that the collapse of World Trade Center 7 was a world first. Now, you know, I'd say that in itself is worth talking about, isn't it? Um, in this situation where you've got all these people putting two and two together and claiming that this was an inside job, if you're going to sit there and say, well, our explanation is that this has never happened before, uh, you know, you better have some pretty good evidence to back that up. And they tried to make the claim in here that no study before this had ever been done to this level of accuracy or detail kind of thing. You'll hear them say that shortly in a minute in their own way. And yet I've shown previously in my last video on this 
testimony from one of the experts leading this whole commission and another one later saying they didn't have enough time or money to do the study and that they were set up to fail. Quote, so if they were set up to fail and they didn't have enough time or money, then how did they manage to make the most detailed comprehensive study ever? Hmm. NIST used detailed data describing the building and its contents to create the most complex computer simulation of a structure collapse ever made. Falling debris from Tower 1 started fires on 10 floors in Building 7. A break in the city water main from the collapse of the towers disabled sprinklers in the lower half of WTC 7, allowing fires on those floors to burn for seven hours. The NIST computer model was validated with evidence from videos, photos, witness accounts, and other data. Right, so they claim that the NIST model matched the video evidence, except this model doesn't actually match the video evidence at all for the collapse of the building itself, uh, which you can see from the evidence put forward in the Alaska Fairbanks study. It shows that heat from fires expanded long support beams, causing connections and floors to fail. So the Alaska Fairbanks study basically says that the model that they produced, the NIST produced, used wrong calculations for the flexion of the outer layers of the building. In other words, they said it wasn't flexible, wasn't as flexible as the Alaska Fairbanks study concluded that it was, uh, the outer layers of the building, and therefore they miscalculated what was happening to the girders supporting the building inside. So you look at the floors failing here, and eventually this column 79 is going to buckle, it fails, and then the entire vertical progression takes place. The buckled column caused additional collapsed floors and falling debris that removed support from adjacent interior columns. A chain reaction then caused other interior columns to fail in quick succession. The outside shell of the building fell. The NIST team found no evidence that explosives were involved in the collapse. And our analysis showed that even the smallest explosive charge that was capable of bringing down the critical column in the building had it occurred, uh, we would have seen sound levels of 120 to 130 decibels about a half a mile away. Right, okay. So, fair enough. It would have been really loud. You would have heard really loud explosions. Well, I'm not an expert in demolition, but people have said that thermite was used in this. And thermite heats the, the, the uh, metal up, and I've seen recreations of that, and it wasn't loud. People, I've seen a guy do it in his, in his garden. Basically, there was no loud explosion. So. Perhaps using standard demolition charges, you would have heard a massive explosion, but not necessarily using the, the forms of explosive or forms of thermic charges, let's say, that people claim were used to bring these towers down. First of all, secondly, there are testimonies and recordings, seismic recordings of large explosions, and you can see reporters on the ground saying that they heard large, loud explosions coming just before the building collapsed. But if there was thermite used in this, then as far as I know, it wouldn't have created large explosions in the way that he's talking about. It would have been an incredibly loud sound, and that sound was not picked up by any of the videos or witnesses that we have talked to. The team found that World Trade Center 7's design was generally consistent with the relevant building codes when it was built. Our high-rise buildings in this country are very, very safe. Having a collapse of this nature is a very rare event. Nevertheless, to ensure that buildings do not collapse in fires, even when sprinklers fail or are not present, the NIST team urges re-evaluation of the fire performance of structures with long-span floors and other design elements similar to WTC-7. The team's report also calls for stronger codes, standards, and practices so that other buildings don't suffer the same fate. Okay, so lots of interesting points there. I just want to come back to the issue that he raised with regards to explosives. Because, funnily enough, if you watch this video, which they never mentioned at all, what do you see? Oh, look. Oh, look. Bang, 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 bang. Flash, 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 flash. Building comes down. Funny that, isn't it? Very different to what he was saying in the last video.
So, not only have we got explosives there, well, apparently explosives, let me put it this way, there's only two possible explanations from my mind as to what we just saw in those in that video with those flashes. Either they are demolitions charges, or they are some other component within the building exploding in a sequence relative to the, the girders breaking for some other reason. Maybe, the, maybe who knows, maybe for the reason this suggested. So perhaps there were gas pipes or something like that that fractured and flames came out, but I don't know. It doesn't really look like that to me. I don't think that's actually what happened, to be honest, but, uh, you know, I guess possibly something like that could have happened. It just seems strange that you hear these explosions, you see the flashes, the building collapses in very much a way that you would expect to see if there was some sort of demolition charge placed on those floors, and yet the guy from this doesn't mention it at all. Doesn't say, oh yeah, and that video, it was actually this that caused it. Doesn't mention it at all. It's been a long time since I read the NIST report, and I don't think I even read all of it, even back in the day. That's quite long. Um, and maybe I will go back and reread it now. Uh, but I don't recall ever hearing any explanation of what those flashes and explosions were from anyone in all the years I've been looking into this from the NIST report. But then we've got this other extra piece of evidence here, which, you know, has caused so many debates and arguments over the years. And, you know, is having one piece of evidence that's dubious, that makes you question what's going on here is one thing. But when you've got a long series of them that are highly suspect, you really do have to open your mind to other possibilities. This is Larry Silverstein, the basically, I'm not sure if he was the exact owner of those buildings. I think he was. Uh, or at least he had a long lease on it from, from the government, or whoever, however that was arranged. But to all intents and purposes, he was the owner at the time. And he got, um, I think, the world record-breaking insurance payout as a result of these buildings coming down. This is what he had to say in a documentary after 9-11 about World Trade Center 7. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. And I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull. And then we watched the building collapse. Right, so that's from his own words. It says they're leaseholder, which is what I thought. Yeah, so his own words, he says that the fire brigade basically told him, or he agreed with them, that they would pull it. Now, you know, many demolitions experts other various relevant experts have commented on that. They've been asked to comment, what could that mean? Pull it. And they're very clear. Pull it means you demolish the building and you deliberately pull it down. That There isn't another meaning for it in that context from professionals. That's it. Pull it. So he's literally saying there that he conversed with the fire brigade, the fire safety teams, and agreed to pull the building down. But how are you going to pull the building down unless you've got a method of doing that? You aren't, are you? So basically what he's saying is that building did not collapse as a result of just organic fires taking place. Something was done by those people to make it come down. Now, as far as I'm aware, the only realistic way you can do that is with explosive charges. So unless they've got some sort of special vibrational energy weapon, <laughs> which they're not talking about, which seems a bit unlikely, you know, it would suggest that there was actually some sort of charges pre-planted in there based on what he's saying, based on the images we're seeing. And so on. So, you know, you can't blame people for questioning the official story of this, the government version of things, when the evidence so clearly points towards a version of events taking place that completely contradicts the government's own report on, on the issue. So what do you think? I mean, you've now got a four-year academic study done that says the, the NIST report from the government basically is incorrect. It's got errors in the calculations. Uh, extensive studies and calculations done apparently we've yet to see that report checked by other professionals and so on maybe there's flaws in the new report but at the moment we have that report we've got this evidence which on the surface looks very much like world trade center 7 was demolished despite what the nist report says you've got people who i showed in the last video that i put out who actually was well, one of them was the chairman of the NIST report at that time, and another one was high up in that, basically saying they were set up to fail, they didn't have enough time, and there was political pressure on them to just finish the report and not ask too many difficult questions. That's basically what they literally said. So, yeah, uh, anybody who's basically saying that people that question the 9 11 official story are just crazy, quacky, you know, lunatic, paranoid, tinfoil hat wearing people need to address these points. And 
it's been a long time since I've really got into the depths of this in any forums, but I know that there are debunkers out there that try to debunk the conspiracy theory, so-called, uh, and sometimes they do a decent job of that, but I don't personally recall seeing anybody thoroughly, reliably um, debunking the evidence put forward here in a way that completely corroborates what NIST has said, for example. I've seen people say, oh, well, this wasn't really the first building to collapse as a result of fires. There were other ones and things like that. But hang on a minute, if NIST are the expert in all of this and you're trying to back up their version of events and say this really wasn't all that odd, then why are you contradicting them? I mean, it doesn't add up, does it? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. If you've got any comments on this, then please do let me know. I'm sure there's lots of people out there that have got, you know, interest in this and lots to say. So, um, but I very much would like to get this information once again into the public mind. You know, so so much came out of 9-11 with regards to war, death, destruction, corruption, theft, you name it, political problems. We've still got the aftermath of all of this now. It's not like this was just this historic event and, you know, our granddad can go on about it till his dying day and it's all irrelevant. That's not reality. The reality is that actions are still taking place today on a massive scale that affect nearly everyone as a result of this event. So it's not something to forget about, it's something to study and learn from. Uh, and yeah, I really like to see more people becoming aware of the real evidence regarding this. So that, you know, I'm I'm not totally fixed in my way. If you can prove to me that the official NIST version of events was accurate and all of these bits of evidence that people have put together over the years, of which this is actually only the tip of the iceberg, if all of this stuff is, uh, you know, irrelevant, wrong or whatever, then all right, fine, show me. I'm totally open to hearing about it. So once again, if you've liked what you've heard from me here, you've appreciated the information, maybe it's helped you clear up some issues, questions, led you down a different rabbit hole that you weren't maybe going to go down, then please do give me a like and upvote. Uh, subscribe if you're new and re-steam, re-blog and share this onto your friends on whatever social networks you like to use. If you're on YouTube, please do hit the notification bell to get notified fully of future videos that I put out. And until next time, peace.